Hi, my name is David Roman from Comprehensive Environmental. I'm here to talk with you today about the Johnson Creek Watershed Flood Resiliency Project. The Johnson Creek Watershed has several areas of potential flood risk. Increases in the intensity and magnitude of future rainfall could increase flood risk throughout the watershed in the future. As a result of this, the town of Groveland conducted a flood resiliency study for the Johnson Creek watershed with funding from the Massachusetts Municipal Vulnerability Program. This project included three primary tasks, and these tasks were one, to perform field data collection, two, to build a computer model to simulate flooding, and then three, to come up with an action plan with recommendations to increase watershed-wide resiliency. The watershed, or the Johnson Creek watershed, is shown here in red. So the watershed extends beyond the boundaries of Groveland. So the boundary of um, Groveland here is shown in the gray dashed line. So the Johnson's Creek watershed, you know, essentially there's some headwaters here with the Chadwick Pond. Everything flows into Johnson's Pond, which eventually ends up discharging into the Merrimack River. As we can see on this map, this map is showing the, the Federal Emergency Management Agency's National Flood Hazard Layer. Anything that's in green or blue has a potential future flood risk. So the takeaway from this map is that a majority of the main stem of the Johnson Creek watershed does have some um, risk of flooding. So to implement this project, we started off with field data collection. So the idea was to visit most road crossings and dams within town um, in the watershed. And then once we had data on all of these locations, we were able to build a computer model to simulate the hydraulics of the main stem of the Johnson Creek watershed. So the main stem, as we modeled it here, is shown in green. So looking at Johnson's Pond, uh, going from the outlet along to Johnson Creek, and then Argilla Brook before it discharges into the Merrimack River. So for the data collection process, we visited uh, as many major road crossings and dams as possible, and then at each location collected you know, relevant information. So looking at the different attributes. So for example, if we were looking at a culvert, we'd be interested in looking at you know, what's the size of the culvert, what's the shape, what's the material, um, any condition observations, is it generally in good condition, poor condition, or fair condition? We looked at sedimentation, you know, so is there um, sediment accumulation that could be limiting the overall conveyance capacity of that culvert? We also looked at upstream and downstream channels to identify if there were any observable issues. So for instance, you know, was there any erosion observed or bank instability? And one good example is this photo here. We can see that, you know, the bank is essentially being... Um, uh, you know, eroded. Um, any blockages like trees, and then we took uh, photos at each at each different location. Once the field visits were done, we tabulated and summarized all of those results. And we then were able to build a computer model based on those field data collection results, and then run simulations using rainfall data for uh, existing versus potential future conditions. And this table here is showing the, um, the storms that we ran through that model. So looking at um, rainfall that falls over a 24-hour period um, for a five-year storm, a 25-year storm, or a 100-year storm. And just for reference, a 25-year storm has about a 4% chance of being equaled or exceeded during any given year. So 1 over 25. So what we can look at here, for example, is if we look at the 100-year storm under existing conditions, that's expected to be about 8 inches of rain over a 24-hour period. For future conditions, that number increases 
almost up to 11 and a half inches. So that is a lot of rainfall um, over, you know, over a 24 hour um, range of time. And once the model was built, once we ran simulations, once we looked at all the data collection results like condition, um, sedimentation, et cetera, we pulled everything together and identified 15 potential improvement sites. And we were then able to simulate potential flooding at those sites and then essentially come up with, with a detailed action plan of, you know, what's uh, of recommendations, cost estimates, as well as uh, ranking. And it should also be noted that that all of these recommended solutions um, had a focus on nature-based solutions. So trying to recommend things that, that mimic nature. Okay, so this slide here is showing um, just an overview of the 15 recommended sites. So I won't go into detail on every single one of these sites, but the takeaways are that we have 15 recommended sites scattered throughout the watershed and they were ranked. So anything that is in dark purple would be a high priority. Anything in a light purple would be, would be medium priority. Anything in white would be low um, would be low priority. Recommend uh, recommendations were, were wide ranging. So some potential recommendations included right sizing, right sizing of culverts, installation of bioretention areas, buying um, existing undeveloped land, um, dam management operations, and a bunch of others. So what we can do now is we can look at a comparison of possible flooding. So we'll look at what the model is simulating under, you know, current conditions without these improvements. And then, um, you know, how could we improve the flooding if these improvements were to be implemented? And I'll only go over a couple different storms we did you know we did look at the five-year storm as well um, so if we look at the future 25-year storm so we're going to look at kind of the worst case scenario here so just imagine that the existing 25-year storm is less rain so less potential flooding so under the future 25-year storm if there were no improvements in place in the watershed um, what this map is showing is potential flooding of the road. So anything in green, there's no simulated flooding. Yellow, less than a foot of flooding. Orange is one to three feet of flooding. And red is more than three feet of, uh, of flooding. So the takeaway here is that for this future 25-year storm, which is approximately uh, um, equal to the existing 100-year storm, um, there is, there are quite a few locations that are simulated to flood. Um, you know, so the worst would be kind of down before the watershed enters into the Merrimack River. So a couple locations along Main Street, uh, at the kind of main stem of, of Argilla Brook at Center Street, and then at the inlet to Johnson's Pond over at Lower Center Street. Now, if we were to run the model by uh, including the recommended improvements, we can see that all potential flooding is removed except for one location down at Main Street. Now we can do the same thing by looking at the potential future 100-year storm. So without any improvements, um, pretty much a majority of the modeled locations did flood. Uh, the flooding depths at some locations were simulated simulated to exceed three feet. If we um, implement proposed improvements, we can see that we are able to reduce flooding, so especially the flooding depth at most of these locations. 
Okay, so this table here is just showing a general summary of these recommendations. So each row is a recommended is includes a recommendation. So including a description of the improvements, how hard it could be to implement, what are the potential benefits, what are the potential costs, and what is the overall ranking. So uh, we would like to get uh, we'd like to hear more information from you. <laughs> so please do visit the project website for more information. Um, you can access the website by scanning this code with your phone. Um, and it's just right up on the town's website. Um, we also have a online survey that anyone can take to give us feedback on this material and then also just if you know of any other areas in the watershed that we missed it would be great to get your feedback so you can take your phone and scan this code and it's a really quick survey so thank you very much for the time and that's it